welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence that's delivered over the internet from the cloud. Now, until this point in time, all forms of intelligence were locally located, with the human brain embodied in the head, in the body of its user, and artificial intelligence also having its own personal hardware. But increasingly, most people are going to be interacting with AI delivered from the cloud. And so in this video, I'm going to present a framework for cloud AI services. And I'm also going to highlight some of those services already being made available from the likes of Google and Microsoft and Amazon and IBM. Cloud AI services deliver cognitive capacities over the internet. More specifically, they allow client applications or client things to upload structured or unstructured data and to receive a cognitive response. So, for example, a website may submit text in English to a Cloud AI service and receive back a translation in French. Or a smart speaker may upload a stream of audio data and receive back an interpreted command or the answer to a user's information request. From a user's perspective, Cloud AI services may be categorised into four quadrants on a 2x2 two two matrix. On one axis, we have the type of client involved, which may be a software application or a physical object or thing. On the other axis, we have the type of data upload, which may be structured or unstructured. Structured data is that presented in a format which a computer can readily interpret such as a stream of e-commerce transactions, stock levels, GPS coordinates, or other sensor readings. Human beings are able to process structured data, but soon become overwhelmed by high levels of volume or velocity, which AI services can increasingly process. Unstructured data includes digital audio, photographs, and video, all of which have traditionally been difficult for computers to make sense of. But today, this is changing, with Cloud AI services increasingly able to recognise and respond to unstructured data. To provide some examples, a Cloud AI recommendations engine may be plugged into an e-commerce website where it can learn from previous customer transactions and present visitors with optimal purchase options. Meanwhile, a face recognition service may be accessed by a web page or a standalone software application. Thirdly, an AI voice service can allow a smart speaker, home automation system, or even an automobile to upload a stream of audio data that is transformed into a meaningful command or question response. Finally, an optimization engine may receive a mass of sensor data and use it to improve the functioning of a water treatment plant, an electricity grid, or even a whole colony of things such as a fleet of delivery vehicles. Right, let's have a look at some of the Cloud AI services which are currently available. And starting with something very simple, which I'm sure you've probably seen before, this is Google Translate, where you can enter some text into one side of the screen and it can translate it into another language. Luxembourgish there, we can pick any language we want, providing Google knows about it, and it will attempt a translation. It may be right, it may be wrong, I have no idea, but that thing's been going on for a while. Websites calling Google Translate to do a translation. Google's also got some more sophisticated cloud services. All of these have what's called an API, an application programming interface, which just means everything I'm showing you here is something that can be plugged in to a website, can be accessed by an object, can be plugged in to an application using some fairly basic and standardized coding. So this is the Cloud Vision API from Google. Here we can drag an image onto there or click to a loaded image. Let's load into that image there. All the test images I've got here I've anonymized, so there's no metadata, there's nothing to give it a clue in the name of the file. Let's see what it makes of that. We know what that is, it's a picture of London. See what Google can make of it, analyzing the photo. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's worked out its Big Ben. It's also worked out where it is, looking and given us a map. That's, that's pretty clever, isn't it? And it's given us some labels, I imagine, which are pretty accurate. And this is, it's confident it's got it right. Let's try a couple of others. I love playing with this sort of stuff. It's amazing how powerful computers already are. This is, uh, you can see straight away, a giraffe photographed at London Zoo a few years ago. Does Google know it's a giraffe? Not only does, does it know it's a giraffe? It does know it's a giraffe, it's a mammal, etc. it's at a zoo. It even knows, look, where it is. That, that I am rather impressed at. Google can actually guess that. Let's give it one more. Let's try, um, 
that photo there. Also at London Zoo. This is flamingos, but I think a tricky picture because of the angle of the birds here. It still 95% certainty it knows they're flamingos. That's clever. Google's also got various language-based cloud AI services. This one here will actually analyze language. So I'll put in, for example, here I've got in the buffer, this is the opening to this video, at least what I was supposed to have said anyway. If I analyze that, it'll flick through and it'll split it down into different entities. This is how a computer starts to try and understand human language. And uh, you can see it's worked out what they all are, linked into various things, worked out where people are potentially, worked out organizations and found links to content on them. It's also done some sentiment analysis, trying to analyze opinion in the piece. There's not a lot of opinion in that piece, but you can see it works out most opinion is in the bit where it says, I'm gonna talk about, clearly I'm is opinion, and in this video I'm therefore gonna present it's done, done that as well. But the thing I find most interesting here is where Google has tried to analyze the syntax of what it's seen. So every sentence here has been broken down into a constituent parts. And I love the fact by the time you get to long sentences, look, it's got all sorts of analysis. This is computers trying to understand the world as, as people say it and view it. Microsoft also has loads and loads of these cognitive services as it calls them. There we are, Microsoft Cognitive Services up the top there, and again with application programming interfaces, which you can use. I should note all the services I'm showing you here, I'll put the links in the video description, they've all got access to use them for free to a certain extent. Um, again, there's a vision system, we've got to try that, haven't we, just because we tried Google's. Give it some different pictures though. Let's, um, let's load in, oh, it's given us a free picture of someone there, it's already identified. It's made sure it thinks they're a male who is swimming. Let's try some of my own. Here's D, I think that's me. It is me, what does it make of me? This is frightening. And um, I'm not adult content, I'm a people portrait. Um, it thinks I'm 48, I'm 50, that's not bad, it reckons I'm male. And you can see down here that there is some um, attempts it's made at a description, it thinks I'm wearing a dress shirt and tie. Um, it's pretty sure I'm a person, 99.999% sure I'm a person. Thinks I'm wearing a necktie etc. Thinks it's taken indoors. So it's done a bit of work on that. It's pretty good. Let's give it one more. This one here is a picture of the sea at a rill in Wales. And uh, oh, it's worked out, look, outdoor ocean beach. And it's got large confidence of some sky here and some water, etc. There's also all sorts of other things that Microsoft allow you to do with their APIs. As you see, face recognition, video recognition, speech-based services you can add in, language-based services, various text analysis again, uh, knowledge analysis, academic knowledge API, that's fascinating, you can link things together. This is what I was referring to a bit earlier on, the recommendations API. This means if you're running a website, you can actually get an AI tool to actually work out what to show your visitors in terms of things that are frequently brought together. It can find links so it makes the best recommendations or it can do things like if you bought this you might want to buy this or it can actually make recommendations based on the user's journey through the site. Another company offering this sort of cloud service is Amazon, particularly enabling smart objects. As it says there, we can bring its Alexa service to a connected products using Amazon's intelligent cloud-based voice service. And you might remember I played with this a couple of videos back where we actually did this service running on a, on a Raspberry Pi, so we could actually talk to our, our Raspberry Pi. Facebook, I've also got some great stuff available. Again, lots of free stuff you can use to plug in natural language systems into your system using their what, WIT AI system. Very, very exciting there. I'll leave that to a, have a look at. And finally, the company really has really started all this off to, to some extent in terms of really sophisticated online AI is IBM with its system called Watson. And Watson is a system which takes a corpus of knowledge and applies analysis to it to do all, all sorts of particular things. We look at the product base here from Watson. Watson is starting to be used by all sorts of companies. It's got what it's called Watson Discovery for doing analytics. It's got a, a conversation agent and links to that a virtual agent for doing things like online customer interfaces so people can talk directly to the organization but via its, its virtual service. Um, it can analyze knowledge. And again, there's all sorts of APIs here. We looked at the API list, I think from up there you'll see. These are a little bit more complex than the things from um, Microsoft and, and Google, etc. But again, you can see lots of different services you can use to plug in to your applications plug into your devices.
Cloud AI is expanding rapidly and will facilitate many new business and computing services. This said, it will also place an increasing quantity of personal information and power into the hands of a very small number of computing companies. And because of that, I'd be very interested in your view on this topic. Do you welcome the fact we're entering into a world where we'll be able to interact with our computers a lot more fluidly, talk in natural language, voice control of robots and home automation and all that kind of stuff? Or do you worry about the fact that what we're going to do in terms of surrendering information to actually get those services? So please let us all know what you think about that down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,